Welcome to Post Tsunami, where we talk about our experiences with the Tsunami of Sound, where we are in life, and our thoughts and goals for the future. And I'm with Alejandra. Thank you for taking the time to do this. <laughs> it's, it's been a oh, while. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. <laughs> it has been a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, so go ahead and uh, introduce yourself for the people who are not familiar with you. <laughs> So my name is Alejandra Juarez. Um, I graduated in 2012 along with Duke and a couple others. Um, yeah, I was in band for <laughs> I was in band for three years. I joined my sophomore year. Um, I was in drumline. That's why I joined the band. Um, and I played the bass drum and the cymbals. What kind of person were you in high school? Like, describe your your bandy self. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was really quiet. I didn't talk at all. I was just to myself. Um, I just went to go play and then I just left when I needed to. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's the kind of person I was. I'm not, I'm not that kind of person anymore, but I was definitely a very quiet person and mm -hmm. just reserved. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was fairly reserved as well. Although I had to break out of my shell because of the whole, the whole drum major thing. Um, yeah. I, yeah, that's <laughs> it, it. It really forced me to to, to get out there. Um, yeah, so... I, I definitely did too. So it was uh, as I progressed and like to senior year, I kind of got out of my shell as well. Yeah. So um, so you were in drumline. Can you like walk us through like how you got started in band? Like I guess from I guess tryouts to I don't know like when you when you joined. Ooh, it's been a long time. Um, yeah, do you remember any I, of that? <laughs> I remember the reason I joined was because a cousin of mine was in Drumline in 2005 yeah. or around around that time. Um, Ooh, you know, I, I was trying to figure out. Do I know Robin? that person? Do I know that person? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> She's not involved in like coming back and stuff. Um, no. She, I was, I remember telling her that I wanted to join, you know, a certain squad or you know so be involved in school just to get out of my shell yeah and she told me she's like oh i, I was in drumline you should check it out because she's she was like you know you know a lot about music and i think this would be a, a good opportunity for you so i was like okay and then i dragged a friend with me to the tryouts and it went from there <laughs> oh, and nice. i enjoyed it and yeah, yeah was were 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 symbols your was were cymbals the original instrument you wanted to play or was there something else that you wanted to play like the snare or the bass i wanted to play i remember when i joined i wanted to play the cymbals or the snare but i was put uh -huh. into bass drum and at first i was like oh i don't really want to play the bass drum but uh -huh. i ended up liking it for the most part so it was a it was a good experience oh okay nice how how are how are tryouts because um I never formally tried out because like, oh, I didn't, I was already in like the band, so I couldn't do drumline yeah. per se. Um, so I never got to experience that. How was like, how were tryouts? I guess like the, the I guess the details of the tryouts. <laughs> From what I remember, the captain at the time was Tiffany. So I remember this was when there was only about six or so people in drumline, yeah. so they needed a lot of the spots filled out. Um, but I remember it was fairly easy. It was kind of everywhere in a sense. Mm -hmm. I remember Sandro being there, <laughs> and yeah. I remember Sophia being there as well. And I was trying out with, I believe it was Betty, Lily, and yeah. a couple others. Um, it was interesting because. From what I remember it was how to explain it. It was kind of I don't know how to explain it. It was um Was it what like were there, were trials difficult? Was it like kind of nerve wracking <laughs> because there was a lot of pressure to do really well at during tryouts? Yeah, it was it was nerve wracking, but it was it wasn't organized. Oh from what I remember. Yeah. Tiffany was not from what I remember was Tiffany, she just kind of, she showed up for a little bit and then she would leave. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't kind of there the whole time. Yeah. And it was, they were short. 
the tryouts were not that long. Oh, I see. Because I like I thought they were freaking two, three weeks to like a month long. I guess it depends on the I, I think they were two or three weeks, but they weren't too long, like the sessions. I think they oh. were like an hour. And I expected them to be a little bit longer from what I remember. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um going going a little bit um into the past is there something that like that's the first thing you think of when you think of band um not 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 necessarily your most memorable moment but i guess just the first moment that you remember um i guess that could be a memorable moment but that might be different from like the memory that just comes up in your mind <laughs> i think that's the most memorable memory i have and just meeting, um, I think it was Sandro, Sophia, Cassie, and I already knew Cassie mm -hmm. beforehand. So I just yeah. remember meeting all of them. And from then on, I don't remember much. <laughs> I feel like I don't have a lot of memories from high school just because I was so, you know, reserved. Mm -hmm. But I definitely and, remember Sandro uh -huh. and uh, Cassie and Sophia. Yeah, was there, was there a reason for your reservation? Cause um, I had I, like I had my reasons, <laughs> but uh, it it might be different uh, yeah. for other people, you know. Yeah. Um. Just I grew up really quiet. I don't think I had like a specific reason as to why I was so quiet. I was just um, I just grew up like that, and mm -hmm. I was just always very reserved. And I knew I needed to come out of my shell, so that's why I joined Drumline to uh -huh. kind of be more open and be more outgoing <laughs> uh -huh. okay yeah because i was for for me i was sort of forced in i was forced into the drum major position so i was like kind of forced socially to break out of my shell um it's because of sandra correct yeah so zandra and i we both um tried out for drumline or not no not drumline drum major well we both tried out for drum major and um we were there for the first week. It was all going fine. Um, but at the end of that week, Zandro decided to um, stop trying out because he wanted to uh, get Drumline back together. Because back then, um, this is whole uh, <laughs> Drumline history. You probably know <laughs> about it. But um, you can, you can yeah. watch Zandro's episode about that. We talk about that in excruciating detail. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember Sandro telling me a little bit about the the whole history of it yeah. and how it was it was horrible throughout that i think it was our freshman year yeah. when all of this happened yeah it was it was a lot but um yeah long story short uh he went to go do the drumline thing and so that kind of left me by myself in drumline tryout or no, drum major tryout so i'm getting like these totally mixed up. <laughs> um so it was it was me and three other eighth graders um we'll we'll later know who who they are like because they're going to join band when um when they um turn into freshmen but it was um it was it was sam arnell and taylor um they were eighth graders at the time when they tried out mm -hmm. and uh if i was julian <laughs> i i'm <laughs> i'm glad that he gave that opportunity to um to people in junior high but if i was him like why would i um give someone that position um someone from junior high i don't i don't know because you know they don't have any experiences with with the band um yeah they're they're gonna be like brand new going in, into the position i don't know it's just strange um so since i was the only one that was like in in band as i was I would think that I would be the no-brainer um, choice. I don't know. That's just, that's yeah. just my thought. Uh, it makes sense, though. Yeah. You know, they haven't experienced, you know, the marching band and high school band in general. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have my second question here in the past. How was, how was, your, how was your band experience? Um, was it yay, nay? Was it, it like, was it super it's, memorable? It was definitely... <laughs> It was definitely super memorable because now I could say I had experiences in high school and, you know, I was able to expand my knowledge of music and 
make memorable have memorable experiences with friends and make new friends mm. um yeah so it was definitely memorable and i i really enjoyed it <laughs> mm -hmm. did you have any um did you have any like did you have a musical background going into band or did you not know anything about music <laughs> or making music and i believe fourth grade i did trumpet for like a couple months but i didn't like it so oh really wow i, I, did. <laughs> I did i'm offended as a um, trumpet player no, i'm just kidding <laughs> i know <laughs> but yeah i joined um for about three months but i didn't like it so i stopped doing mm -hmm. that um i was in choir in church in my church for three years and I've always enjoyed music and I played guitar and piano for a little bit um, growing up. So when I entered high school, I knew I wanted to do something with music. And that's why I thought of also drumline and why my cousin told me to join drumline to kind of expand my musical knowledge. So I ended up liking it, you know, that it was different because I was so used to guitar and piano and I wasn't used to like drums, mm -hmm. but it was, it was a good choice. I believe it was a good choice for me to join, um, marching band as well. And to a concert band, that was, uh, that was also a memorable experience for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Did you, did you know how to read music, um, going to band or did you learn all that like in band? I think I, I think I knew like the basics, just like the four oh, okay. and four and, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't really go into like, you know, in depth of like oh, okay. reading music. Oh, okay. So you learned it kind of on the spot. Yeah. And I, I think I learned it fairly quickly. <laughs> oh, okay. Cause I still, and even now I still can, I'm able to like read music and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. I think I have that knowledge still. Yeah, you mentioned um, the guitar. Did you do you know how to play guitar, or did you know how to play guitar going do. into band? Okay, cool, cool. I started at thir at thirteen or twelve. I don't I don't remember. Mm -hmm. um, my dad plays guitar, so he kind of showed me, and then from there, I just kind of learned by myself. And I still play now a little bit here and now, but I'm so busy, so I don't pick it up as much. But yeah, I'll still pick it up every so often yeah yep that's like me in the trumpet <laughs> right now um <laughs> although i haven't i haven't been playing that much because um because of covid it shut down um the rehearsals for the ventura county concert band and that kind of sucks oh um, yeah we used to meet we used to meet um every wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m um but we haven't met since since march so that kind of sucks oh, wow. because yeah the, last march uh we were um we were practicing for our i think it's our spring concert because our spring concert is in the beginning of april um so we were at the tail end of um getting ready for that concert but then covid hit so i still have my music of all the pieces that we were <laughs> we, we were gonna play and, uh, oh wow nice and yeah i mean i i i plan to go go back you know when when uh and yeah everything's when everything's done. situated with covid um but uh Crazy, well, it's been yeah, a, about to be a year yeah i know right like i don't think any of us thought that uh, <laughs> no. it would uh <laughs> take this long um, definitely but, i it's it's crazy how it's all it's about to be a year yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that that affects your line of work, right? Which we'll, I'm sure we'll get into when we get into that section. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there a favorite year of band you had? So you did band for how, how many years again? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> my, soph <laughs> my sophomore year, I joined uh, up till senior okay. year. Okay, so like three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have like a favorite, favorite uh, year of band? I, I I feel like I'm in between like my sophomore and our senior year. I feel okay. like those two years were my favorite. Um, 
I guess I'll kind of go into depth as to why my sophomore year and my senior year were mm-hmm. my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Um, my sophomore year, I feel because it's new, you know, I was, I was making new friends, you know, these experiences were new, you know, we went to Pismo beach. That was the first time I've ever been there. So it was extremely new to me. And then while making these friends, you know, I was making these memories. Um, so definitely my sophomore year was fun because of the Pismo trip and Six Flags. I remember um, some of the memorable things were like the bus rides. Oh, <laughs> those yeah. Those were yeah. probably the. <laughs> I have a lot of stories from those. Oh, do you? I don't know if you. <laughs> I don't know Are if you they... remember like the. Oh. The truth or dare, we would play like truth or dare, and they would kind of get crazy. Um, I think one of the the memories I remember is I think Tony, he uh-huh. was like giving a lap dance to somebody. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So Wait, like, stuff tell like me that. more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I think it was to Sandro. I don't remember exactly who was doing it to, uh-huh. but um, I just remember like those little details. You know, I don't remember in depth of um those yeah, de- yeah. those um incidences, but definitely <laughs> that. I remember they. I think it was Jessica. She like I had to do a dare where I had to like kiss one of the bandies. I don't remember who it was. Um, you know, so those little those little those little memories those the, the ones that i remember the most and for my senior year i just remember you know when we won i think it was third place our senior year at pismo was it third place or was it second place i think it was second i don't okay so i don't know if it's our senior year but there was one year where um we got technically we got first place right but what happened was that they deducted like 10 points because our bus parked in the wrong spot. And so <laughs> they, de- they deducted those points and that made us go into second place. I don't know. Something like really, really stupid. Um, I, I think that was our senior year. Or yeah. Was that might have been, I don't, I don't remember either, but uh, I just remember it being really stupid. It's like, why is our bus placement? <laughs> why does that even matter? I mean, I don't know. I guess that was the incentive to park in the right spot, but uh that wasn't even yeah. in our control. That was like up to the up to the bus driver. So that kind of sucks. Right? Technically, we should have gotten first place. But uh... yeah, definitely. Um, and then I do remember music wise when we played. Um, like did the Disney medley? Was that our senior yeah. year? I don't remember. Yeah, I, think, I remember uh, that. And... Was it? Uh, I we did our Disney medley. I think that was our junior year, actually. <laughs> was it our junior year? It was. <laughs> See, my memory is just everywhere. No, 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 actually, no. Hold up, hold up. Because we did, we did the I Disney think medley. Our... I think it was our sophomore year. Because we did the Disney medley when Julian and Wardo and Vince and that that class was still there. Oh yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so and that, that was, was our, our sophomore, sophomore year. year. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I rem- I enjoyed playing. Um playing that i i forgot i think i was playing see i don't remember what the instrument was called but the two drums Mm -hmm. the with the sticks i don't know if you remember what it's called the uh tambales or i will it might have been i I think so maybe (laughs) i believe so i remember i was playing that and it was fun playing it Mm -hmm. um yeah that's i think that's my my most memorable is probably my sophomore year definitely Oh, okay. Did you play any other uh, percussion instruments in concert band? Like, what else did you play? What else did I play? <laughs> the cymbals. I did those two drums. Yeah. And I think, I believe that's it. Oh. Okay. For the most part, I played those two drums. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was it, was it a lot of um like fighting over instruments in the back for drumline during concert season because um i know there's like there's a lot of people on drumline but i don't know if there's enough like percussion parts um i think so because yeah because i remember we didn't have enough like instruments for everybody Mm -hmm. so i remember some some of the concert band songs i wouldn't i wouldn't play Mm -hmm. 
or like I'd be in the back just sitting there because I didn't have an instrument yeah, to yeah. play. And you know, we would switch. I remember a lot of that that, that would happen. We would like switch mm. because it was not enough um, instruments. I see. Did uh did you any like did you double up at any point? Um, like on snare or bass. I th- like just in case someone was out for for whatever reason. You know, we had someone else to cover that part. I I think we did. I I don't remember. I I do remember for one concert piece, the bass. It was me, Natasha, and Christian and Sophia. We would play um, the drum, the bass drums for I think it was concert band or marching band. I don't remember exactly what it was, but um, I remember do doing that. Yeah, I think so. I believe so. I don't. It's kind of. It's, it's a very, very vague memory. Uh-huh. Do you um, remember I'm gonna any... Close uh, my oh, yeah, go for it, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm going like to have that my face. Problem. I'm going to have that same problem in, like, two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, Um. do you remember any um, drumline songs? Or any drumline performances? I think the... Was it Squat Spectacular? That one was that was her senior year. I remember that. Um, yeah, that's the big. That's the big. That uh, performance. Performance. Yeah. And then I remember the first time I was cymbals, and we for one of the rallies where I, we'd have to spin the cymbals. I remember being oh, extremely yeah. nervous because that was like my first time doing it in front of everybody, in oh, front yeah, of the yeah, whole yeah. school. <laughs> so I remember how nervous I felt. I remember I wanted to throw up that that day i do remember that day very clearly oh, because because <laughs> I, I i think it was the beginning of the year and mm. you know we were finally getting ready and we were already having our performance ready and you know practicing is different from you know actually performing it in front of people yep. so when i before we were going on i remember like i felt like throwing up and i think it was jose i was doing it with yeah, he yeah, because we were the only two symbols yeah. and Sean. Mm-hmm. Was it Sean? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he played symbols. <laughs> so, I rem- mm-hmm. so I remember just being very nervous and feeling like throwing up, and it was it was bad. Yeah, did you? <laughs> but then once I was up there, yeah, did you happened? practice it a lot? Did you practice? It yeah. A lot? Mm-hmm. I remember we would practice like. I think it was every day the performance so mm-hmm. you know i was finally getting used to like spinning the symbols but once i remember once we were i was up there i remember i hit my head with the symbol so i had like a mm-hmm. cut on my forehead uh-huh so that was um oh that doesn't sound fun that was embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. but the performance went out fine and i i enjoyed it i enjoyed being symbols mm-hmm. it was it was a fun experience oh that's good do you do you still remember how to symbol spin? Like, if you were to teach someone how to symbol spin, do you do, do you remember? Yeah. Um, when I was living in Sacramento, I had a friend who was in the marching band, uh-huh. so she let me play with um, one of her symbols because she had like some at home, and I would like practice it and stuff and i told her i'm like oh i i used to play cymbals and <laughs> so i played it and i still kind of know so yeah. if things get back to normal i'll mm-hmm. i would like to go visit ci and try it out again yeah is there a is it like a is it a trademark like trade secret that drumline um keeps like to themselves unless you're in drumline or <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> Yeah, uh, I remember so, yeah. my, uh, my, or our our freshman year, you weren't in band yet, but um, there mm-hmm. was there was someone um, named Matt, he he played the cymbals, and during one of the rallies, he was cymbal spinning, and the cymbals cut, like, right, like, straight on, like, his, his head. And, I, I remember him telling me that. Yeah, and it was, paramedics had to came, it was a big mess, so... Uh, <laughs> I, I do remember that. Yeah. So... I I remember. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I remember him um, mentioning it when we first um, joined that 
he that's what happened and he like sliced his forehead as well so it, it's pretty dangerous I, I remember him telling me that oh yeah, yeah but it's yeah. fun <laughs> yeah it, it looks fun if it reminds me of um like drumstick spinning i guess in a, a more extreme <laughs> or symbol spinning is just a more extreme oh, version yeah. of of like drumstick spinning because you're not there's um there's a way to do it where you're not really spinning the drumstick it just looks like you're spinning the drumstick um oh I, yeah yeah i don't know if, if that's the same way you do it for for the symbol spinning no i remember we'd have to like grab the the cloth and then just mm -hmm. kind of twist our our wrists and uh -huh. You know, that's you have to like completely turn it, and it's it was pretty easy. Just you just gotta, you know, mm -hmm. just twist your your wrist. <laughs> I see. So it becomes like an extension of of your arm and your wrist. Yeah. So you just gotta yeah. use your your whole body. Mm -hmm. And just make sure that the symbol doesn't split your head open. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all mm -hmm. I got. <laughs> I think that's all I got too. Okay. Cool. Let's uh, move on to the present. So, uh, what are you doing now, and you know what led up to the up to that? So, I'm a I'm a social worker. Um, so, do I go into like my major and, uh, or do you, I just talk about like my job? If you want, um, if if you think it's relevant, <laughs> I would say yeah. If it's, I would say yeah. Um, you can go into like your college, okay, education, all that, and. You know, maybe before college education. Uh, okay, so after high school, I went to OC, and I was kind of lost, and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. So I was just kind of, I spent a lot of time, a long time at the community college until I found sociology, and I fell in love with it. So then I moved to Sacramento to go study social work, and I was there for about four years. Mm -hmm four and a half years or so um and i just moved back in july um oh. and i am now a social worker and i work with foster youth so i work with transitional aged youth and those are the kids who aged out of the foster system so what i do is kind of show them basic life skills such as finding jobs um, paying rent paying bills grocery shopping Showing them how to, you know, do money orders, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So just, I'm just kind of their their coach. So my mm -hmm. job is like life coach. Uh -huh. Um, so that's what I'm doing now. It's stressful. It's stressful. <laughs> it uh, it's very stressful. Yeah. Why? Like, um, why is it stressful? And has has COVID made has COVID made it worse? <laughs> yes, because it's everything's online. So mm -hmm. if it if COVID wasn't here, I would go to their house. I would help them, you know, on in person kind of thing. So I'd be with them in person, kind of um, showing them how to do this. For example, if they're trying to look for a job, I'd help them go on Indeed. I'd help them build a resume, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but it's hard now because everything's on online. So I have to do it through the phone with them or through yeah. Zoom, mm -hmm. which is not fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Another stressful thing about it is just a lot of them, a lot of the the youth, um, you know, they need more, a lot of motiv motivation and it's hard through, you know, Zoom meetings right. because I'm not there to force them to do what they need yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I enjoy it though. You know, I build good relationships with these kids, so it's fun getting to know them. It's just COVID right now. It's just, that's what makes it stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so social, so social work is a major at Sac State. Yes, <laughs> that's an actual major. That's pretty cool because that's that's not a major yeah. at Cal Poly, I think. No, so a lot of place, a lot of Cal States don't have that major specifically. Mm -hmm. Like uh, CSU CI doesn't have it, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to apply there to get closer to home, to be right. closer to home. Um, CSUN doesn't have it, but they have a master's in social work, which oh, is okay. weird. Yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only places in SoCal that had it was Cal State LA and San Diego State. And I remember I got accepted at Cal State LA, but I didn't want to go there. Yeah, I just kind of wanted, I'm like, well, might as well go somewhere farther. Mm -hmm. So San Francisco State had it and Sac State, and I got bo into both. But um, 
I chose Sac State because of the the area and everything. So I mm-hmm. I chose there, and it was um, it's an interesting major. <laughs> oh, it's that... a lot like sociology if you yeah. don't know what um it, what it is. Yeah, you want to explain sociology just briefly. <laughs> So sociology is kind of the study of um, people in a group setting. So just kind of see how they behave and like kind of go in depth of like why people behave the way they they yeah. do. So that's that's what social work is, but just more hands on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems more like the practical aspects of yeah, it. because like the study of sociology, like you can. You can do like I'm, I'm I'm sure you can do research in it, but never actually do any like social work to, you know, working with kids or people that that need that sort of help. Um, I, I guess you could like stay yeah. in, in like the research realm and never be on like on like in the field, like in the trenches, I guess, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's what sociology is when I was getting my bachelor's, um, I had the choice of going into sociology, but it's more research based and I didn't want to be doing research. I wanted more hands on stuff. Right. So that's why I ch- chose social work. Great. And then um, did you do any research into psychology? Because I think psychology is like another um, big major that, you know, a lot of people think about as well. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, I... When I was at OC, I wanted to do psychology, but, you know, I did research on which one was a better option. And with psychology, you know, the with a bachelor's, you can't do much. You know, there's not that many open doors for you to get jobs. So that's why I also chose social work. Um, what else did I research? Uh, I think with like a psychology major, you'd have to get like a master's and a doctorate to do more in-depth work. And I was like, that's yeah. way too long for me to yeah. to be in school. Mm-hmm. And with like a master's in social work, you can be fine. And, you know, you don't have to get like a doctorate. Um, so that's why I chose social work and there's more job options. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I chose social work and I ended up enjoying it a little bit more than psychology because I did take psychology classes and I do like psychology, but I felt like social work was more my path. Yeah. Um. In in high school, did you ever take psych AP with cultural? We had a we had a class together. <laughs> yeah, that was. I think I, think I don't know if you remember. Class. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, a cool class. Yeah, it was. Our, I think it was. Our, <laughs> it was. I I really enjoyed it, and that's why I remembered. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking AP Psych with him because I always liked the, you know, the study of it, and I wanted to go more in depth. and And I took after high school, I took a couple classes of Psych, and I enjoyed it, but just the schooling is not it's not for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of schooling. Um, what do yeah. I remember from that class? I remember it being fourth period, so it was like fourth period and then lunch. Um, I think we were, we sat, I think we sat together at one point or like a couple seats away from each other. Maybe. Um, I don't know if you remember. So I don't, re- I don't remember who I sat around, but I remember like the locations I sat at. So I sat, I sat in like the corner, like next to the door. Like if you're, if you're looking at the whiteboard, I sat in like the back right corner, like towards the back right corner. So I sat near the door oh, okay. that one time. I also sat in like the the front left corner, um, and I might have sat in like maybe like the second row on like the left side of the class, some somewhere around there. That's that's where I sat, the second row, uh-huh. um, to the left side. Yeah. That's where I remember. Um, mm-hmm. I think you were at the edge, and that was like two seats after you. Oh, okay. To yeah. the left. Yeah. Yeah. Was that your? Think- was that your foot in the door into like psych and sociology and all of that? No, um, I have a lot of family members who are social workers and psychologists, oh, okay. uh, therapists. So I was kind of already experienced with that um, with that field. Yeah. Um, my godmother, um, she's a social worker, so she does ther- one-on-one therapy. So she kind of. She's also the one that kind of led me into like social yeah, work. Yeah. It's like, hey, so <laughs> it's like, hey, here's the, you should try this major. You know, you get more options. So mm-hmm. 
definitely she was a big um, reason why I went into social work. And then I have a, a cousin who's a, she has a doctorate in psychology. So, oh, nice. you know, I learned a lot of um, about the field from her and I, that's why I kind of enjoyed it. And with like Cocho's class, I had a really fun time in that class. Like just learning everything. It just came easy to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember, we had to take like a, a quiz to see if we were more left brained or right brain. Do you remember that? No, I I remember like Valentine's <clears> Day. <throat> like culture had like a Valentine's theme like lecture about like the love languages. I re I remember that. <laughs> which, oh, I do remember that. I yeah, remember which that. I still use to this day. It's like, huh, like what love language like are my parents? You know, I never I never thought of that in that framework. Like everyone has Oh, you're they right. like give and receive these different types of of like love and i don't know it's it's a lot <laughs> but um, yeah the left brain right brain um i forgot was the left brain the more like logical side and then the right analytical brain yeah mm -hmm. i remember us taking that and i remember i got like only like four points on like the left brain and like mm -hmm. 30 on the right brain yeah <laughs> and i remember culture pointing it out to me he's like i've never seen anybody with like 90% all right brain and like 5%, 10% left brain. And like he pointed out to the whole class. And I remember just being super embarrassed that he like pointed me out. Um, but I remember that from that class and the love language. Now that you pointed it out, I just, yeah. I just you just brought up a memory I forgot I had. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I think, I think cultural <laughs> just loves to put people on the spot. Like I, uh, I, re definitely. <laughs> I remember this. He would like, he asked me like in front, like, in front of the class is like hey where do you meet girls i'm like i don't know <laughs> like <laughs> it was it was just so weird he definitely did i remember he would do that yeah. and i remember he would like give us like knuckle it was weird yeah he, he, was, he, was, he definitely put people on the spot yeah and he was i remember him being like kind of a kind of a, kind of a touchy person like maybe borderline maybe borderline creepy but he 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 had a, a disclaimer like this is, you know, just how I grew up. You know, this is like my family. Blah 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 blah. blah. Um, yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's it's sort of borderline creepy. I don't know. <laughs> I guess it. I guess it, it really was. On the context, um, right. Yeah. It, he was definitely very touchy, and I didn't like that at all. I was just like, I don't yeah. like people touching me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, get away from me. So it was definitely um, creepy, but this class was enjoyable, though. Oh yeah, really I love this class. It was it was one of the few AP tests that I actually passed. <laughs> I got I got a three on that test, like barely passing. I, but... I got a yeah, I got a what did I? I think I, I in the class itself I got an A, mm. and then the AP test I think I got a four. Oh nice. And then. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I think I, I should major in this because yeah. I'm like, I'm really good at this. Nice. Did you end up using that credit so, in, in college? Yeah. So mm -hmm. after taking intro to psychology, I took behavioral psychology, social mm -hmm. psychology, and a bunch of other ones. Yeah, yeah. So I was able to get ahead of the, the game. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I took um, I actually took social psych in um, in college, too. It was like part of a support elective. It was kind of a weird support elective, but uh, I was like, "Hey, it's it's another psychology class. Why not?" Because as a as an engineering major, computer science, like you don't really have a lot of opportunities to take those sort of classes. Um, oh, okay. So I was like, "Oh, dude, yeah, let me take social psychology. Why not?" <laughs> and, How'd you like it, dude? I loved it. It was um, it was just very different from like all the engineering stuff I did um one of the big things that i remember it was like reverse sausage fest <laughs> like what it, it, like okay engineering is like a sausage fest there's like a bunch of guys there's, there might be like oh, one or two yeah. girls in the class right but uh -huh. in 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 my social psych class it was like the reverse i was like maybe one of like the five guys in the class and that was just that was, oh, wow. just, that was just really jarring for me because I'm coming from like an engineering background, you know, where the classes are like majority guys. Some like sometimes every student like was a guy, um, which is just something I oh, was. Wow. Okay. Yeah, which is just something I was just used to. Um, so that was like one of the first thing that I noticed. Um, 
the second thing that I noticed is uh, that I remember from that class was um, for our final, we had to break a social norm. So we, we were split into like groups of four. And our final project was breaking a social norm. It's like, okay, that as someone who's introverted, that scares the crap out of me, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so the the social norm that we decided to break was um, breaking people's personal bubbles. At the oh library. god, <laughs> yeah, it's like super terrifying, you know, as a as an introvert. Um, I forgot if my yeah. if my group mates were introverted or extroverted. I forgot. Um, but terrifying as an introvert. Um, so what we would do is that um, we would have one person like just go sit at a random like table at the library. Um, and it's and it's very obvious that like they don't want anyone else sitting like either next to them or close to them. So we sat and like close to the, that other person on purpose to see how they would react. And then, <laughs> and then, and then the other group mates would like take notes on what happened. And legit one time, oh, nice. I, yeah. And then legit one time, I sat at a table. I forgot if it was a, if it was a girl or a guy. I sat at, at a table, and they were like legit, like no, this table is taken. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't, they didn't even give me a chance to have it like be awkward. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a pretty nerve wracking. Uh, final project like not something I typically did in computer science <laughs> and that must have taken like a lot of energy from you because you're so introverted yep I know for sure I'm really I'm introverted for the most part so I don't like talking to other people so it takes a lot of energy for me to do certain things yeah so <laughs> mm -hmm. that's cool though like at least it got you kind of like out of your bubble yeah of, well that was that, that was the point get you out there. <laughs> That was the point of the final project was to break people's personal bubble and that like in turn broke like my own personal bubble. I don't know. It was like super strange. I don't know. It was such a weird, weird project. <laughs> Probably like one of the weirder projects I had at Cal Poly. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. I mean, I, I passed that class with like a B plus or A minus or something like that. But uh, nice. Yeah, it was it was a very interesting project to say the least um and then um halfway through the quarter our semesters um halfway through the quarter quarters um, um our professor was um having their kids so they had to take a uh, maternal leave so um we had another professor take over the class and uh she was she was pretty nice um i remember that much uh but uh yeah, overall, really interesting class. I wish I could take more classes like that, like just for fun. That would have been cool. But uh, you know how it is in college. You know, classes are, ex are expensive. So you know, very expensive. <laughs> yeah, you can't really just take classes for fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had to take like a. I took an extra class too because I'm trying to I think I've mentioned you know you helped me with my personal statements yeah. I'm trying to get into like the master's degree of social work and um I'm also applying to a master's degree in counseling psychology so kind of the same thing just like a little different yeah um so I had to take a class last semester and uh it's expensive just for one class it was like 600 it's not fun <laughs> yeah that, yeah that sounds about right <laughs> yeah not fun yeah, uh, so what schools did you apply to for your master's? Uh, so I applied to... Where did I apply to? <laughs> I applied to Cal Lutheran for the counseling and psychology mm -hmm. master's. I applied to CSUN for social work. Um, USC, just for fun. I don't think I'm going to get in, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cal State LA and Dominguez Sales. Mm -hmm. So... Just waiting till April, May. Cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So you, you you submitted your personal statements already. Yeah. So I turned everything in. I'm finally free from doing all that oh, and <laughs> letters are right. Yeah. yeah. How was that? Uh, how was writing it? You know, after I edited it, because um, I spent like maybe an hour or two looking at it. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that again. Oh yeah, um, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um. I went over it a couple more times just to see any gram grammar errors. Um, I kind of went over to see it, just make it, 
to read to see if it's coherent. Um, yeah. And then I had like two other people go over it as well to see if they see any errors. I made sure it was like perfect because I, I don't want to do it again and apply again yeah. in the fall. <laughs> but uh, overall, it was really stressful. Just uh, I had really bad um, migraines and headaches, and it was I get really stressed really really easily so i'm glad that was over that's over yeah and that was on top of all your social work that you still had to do right yeah <laughs> so it was like the yeah. personal statement on top of the the like your actual job <laughs> yes <laughs> and like work right now is like really um really stressful because so many of our kids are moving and a lot of them are getting into like some sort of trouble so it's just yeah. uh, i had to make sure i had time for everything mm -hmm. So I'm glad that's all that's all over. Yeah. Um do you find that it's uh it's hard for the kids to set up I guess the technology to even like get you like in a Zoom call? Um cuz yeah. I know I know for some households, you know, internet having an internet connection is like not a given or it's like really difficult. Um cuz not not everyone has that privilege, right? Yeah, um, a lot of the kids don't have laptops, mm -hmm. so it's hard for them to even do Zoom meetings. Yeah, um, some of them don't even know how to get into a Zoom meeting or like a Teams meeting through Microsoft. Yeah, so it's it's really hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like so over it. I'd just rather be in person, so I'm next to them and making sure they are doing what they need to do kind of thing yeah so it's really stressful just and i'm not and i'm also not a technology kind of person like i didn't even know how to get in here <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's really hard for me as well so that's not only hard for them it's hard for me because mm -hmm. i just don't like you know in per, uh computer wise like face to face yeah so i'd rather just be in person yeah I and mean, you know, technology is nice but it doesn't replace you know physical like interaction and talking with people and yeah stuff, you know um yeah yeah did you have to do like any like social work in college kind of like like that like, kind of like mm. interning like interning yeah so <clears throat> when i so when i was in community college i did a lot of like jobs that had to do with kids mm -hmm. so just so i could already build my resume up so i worked yeah. with like the boys and girls club i did tutoring i did um after school programs and then when i got to to sac state i worked at a after school program for like about a year <clears throat> or so and then my last year at sac state we had to do which is part of a class as well it's an intern class so i'm getting you know i'm getting graded for it I'm also getting the experience. So what I did was um, my intern was at a high school. So I was an intern for, I think the job was school social work, school social mm -hmm. worker. So I worked with the school social worker. So I had clients who I would see that were freshmen, sophomore mm -hmm. aged kids who were, you know, troubled youth. So I would work with them one-on-one -on -one and that was my, my intern. It was fun. Mm -hmm. I actually enjoyed that and I kind of want to get into, um, into that field but here in Knox aren't really hard to yeah. be a school social worker because we don't have the the money right to right. support yeah. psychologists and social workers yeah i don't i don't even remember having any social workers at ci <laughs> no <laughs> i mean we had, we had counselors you know that was like very apparent but yeah I felt like they were school more, counselors yeah they were more like academic counselors you know they weren't mm -hmm. like social like counselors yeah, um, I think in high school, when we were in high school, I, th I was in like a psychology group. She mm -hmm. would come like once a month. Really? And, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then how, you know, South Oxnard is really high in like crime rate and, you know, all those big factors. Yeah. These high schools would benefit mm -hmm. of psychologists and social workers, but, you know, we don't have the money for it <laughs> yeah don't have the money i think i think nowadays i think nowadays they might be a, a little bit more well off um i mean i don't know like the specifics 
about it. I hope but, so. Yeah. I mean, like, I think the thing that like irritates me is that we have we had cops at school. We yeah. had like two cops, one cop, but we can't afford like a social worker or a mm-hmm. psychologist, you know. So I think we have the money. It's just we know we don't we don't prioritize that money into. Things so that actually specific. matter. Yeah, cause yeah. I know. I know. Um, I know the Oxford Union High School District has money because of Measure A. I, th- but I think that money is is supposed to be used for like infrastructure, and not necessarily for mm-hmm. like new school positions. So even I guess even if they wanted to shift that money over to like new positions um they they just can't <laughs> because you know the money yeah really which sucks but... yeah that sucks um yeah. but it's nice because all of the high schools in the Oxford union high school district they're getting some sort of upgrade um i did a drone video yeah. of, of the new field football field and it's look it looks really nice oh i saw that um yeah it does i um they're also doing the tennis courts right yeah i believe they are yeah. Yeah. New tennis courts. They got like a whole bunch of new portables. Um that Oh used, yeah. Yeah, that used to be on the tennis courts. Um so I guess they're 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 just gonna have fewer tennis courts. Um, but they're just gonna make them nicer. <laughs> I guess I guess is the plan. Uh, <laughs> Which makes sense. I mean yeah. I don't I don't know if they used all the tennis courts. Um yeah. It's each time I pass by it seems like they're they took off some. Or yeah. oh, not some. Uh, there's portables covering a couple yeah. of them. So, who exactly. knows? Yeah. Exactly. Um, let's see. What else about uh, about the the present? Um, I have another question. It says here: Does it line up with what your high school self wanted to do? I think so. Mm-hmm. Yes, I yeah. I remember, I believe it was my junior, soft, senior year. Mm-hmm. I remember deciding, I'm like, what am I going to do after high school? Like, am I, what, what's, what's my path? And in my head, I knew, I'm like, I want to help people. You know, I, that's what I, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how I wanted to help people, but that's just how I was. I mean, yeah. I was, I knew I wanted to help people in some way, whether it was in a group setting or, you know, individually and yeah i think i think i always had that empath- empathetic side to me mm-hmm. so i knew i wanted to help people so yeah i i think i always knew i wanted to do this but i just didn't know what exactly it was mm-hmm. yeah i was in the same situation too um Actually, at that time when I when we graduated, I didn't know what I wanted to do. <laughs> I was just like, okay, this is the next step. Uh, I didn't really have like a plan after that next step. So, mm-hmm. um, I think I think most people were in that situation. Because um, I think yeah, I think when we're in high school, we think like, oh crap, everyone else has their stuff together, right? You know, they're, no. doing, they're doing X Y Z, but then it turns out no one knows what they're doing. No. <laughs> And knowing that now, it's like kind of comforting. Yeah, um, even now, I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people still don't know what they're doing. Yeah, so <laughs> if you're listening and you have no idea what you're doing, like it's okay. It's okay because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Especially with COVID now, it's like you. Yeah, yeah. You, it's okay not to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with with COVID, like, are you are you um, driving a lot less? Or driving a lot more. Um, like how was your um, how was your typical day? As my a, typical as a day. Worker? Yeah. So I work at home, so I'm always at home. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for work, I I'm at I work from eight to five, and I'm just at home, you know, doing paperwork, doing assessments, you know, stuff like that, just paperwork. Um, but I do drive once a week to go visit clients. Okay. Um, I go all the way from Camarillo to San Luis Obispo. Oh wow! So really? Ju- Dang! Yeah. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> so it takes what? <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah. So a lot of my clients are up in not San Luis Obispo, kind Samaria? of a little bit. Of, yeah. yeah. So a little bit over there. That's the farthest. I have one client there. I have hmm. two clients in Santa Barbara, and oh. then a lot of them in Ventura, Oxnard, and then Camarillo. Oh okay. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, I know. Um, in that area and slow, <laughs> like Santa Maria is kind of like the Oxnard of that area. If yeah, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. I think if if you ever go to Santa Maria and you're from Oxnard, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Definitely, it's yeah. just yeah. Um. So yeah, that's what I do once a week. Uh, it mm -hmm. takes me the full eight hours. Oh, to do yeah, that. yeah. Because driving so, up to slow takes you know two and a half hours from here. So yeah, yeah. So I definitely do that. Um, mm -hmm. It's fun because I finally get to go out. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's, finally, that's our. Nice. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the reason to go out. But the days that I don't go there, um, I'll just stay at home, and then like kind of my self care thing to do is just go to the gym. So I've been mm -hmm. getting into the gym. Fine. Uh, Oh my god, I lost my train of thought. After <laughs> working, I go to the gym, and that's kind of like my self care, oh, you know, good. just to de stress. So that's my typical day: just work and gym. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I've been um, yeah. kind of kind of in lines with the gym. I've been like um, I've been running for like half an hour before work, so that's kind of like my oh, phys okay. my physical time. Um, because you know I'm working from home too, and I'm like I'm sitting here like all day and uh it's it's it like when you're not moving it sucks because you just it just takes a toll on your body after a while it's it, like that, that sounds kind of weird because you're just sitting there but when you're not moving yeah. it, it it's really like i don't know like it's how do i i describe <laughs> it like it's i get agitated yeah that's my thing Mm -hmm. I'm just like I have to move I have to shake my leg something because I just don't like sitting there doing nothing yeah I'd rather be up and down and yeah you know mm -hmm. yeah so it's definitely I'd rather be at the office and then also just being by myself I don't like it I'd rather be with like other coworkers, you know talking and yeah. you know just being around other people instead of being home alone and just in my room mm -hmm. just by myself yeah so guess, definitely miss yeah i guess i guess like, I definitely miss. yeah i guess the introverted Sorry. side of me likes working from home because sometimes when i'm in my zoom calls with other coworkers, if i'm in the office and i'm in a zoom call that like maybe only me and someone else is in like everyone in the office you know can hear me talk because at the office it's like fairly quiet um because you know they they're buried in whatever work they're doing, so usually in the office, yeah. people like to keep it keep it down. Um, yeah. So so anytime I, I'm in the I office, I agree with you there. Yeah, anytime any anytime I was in the office and I was in a meeting, like I just felt really self conscious. <laughs> like, am I being too loud? Um, is it is it is it okay if we're talking about like non work things right now? Um, but I don't have that problem <laughs> at work or at home now. You know, I can. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you there because um, when I was in SAC, I was working with um, at a center for teens. Mm -hmm. And when I would talk to a client in the phone, I would always feel like I'm being judged by my other coworkers. And yeah, like, am I yeah. saying something right? Am I saying it wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's the only thing I do like mm -hmm. about um, working at home, where I'm, you know, I'm j I could talk freely with my client, and you know, I don't have somebody like constantly listening to me. Yeah, yeah. So definitely a pro from working home. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess from like a um I guess from a movement standpoint, I guess this was a problem too at work is just like sitting for 40 hours. Uh it, it, I mean it, it sounds very first world because it is. But uh you, you know, <laughs> you know sometimes I I think I would rather be at my my old retail job at Target. <laughs> like walking around oh, really? than actually like sitting down because because I'd rather just be moving around than okay, just that makes sense. At, like sitting at a desk um, yeah yeah so that's why I, I, I feel like I have to um, do my runs in the morning um, to like get that out of me I guess and because I'm doing it at the that very makes sense. Yeah. since I'm doing it at the very beginning of the day um it kind of sets the mood, I guess, for the rest of the day. I don't know. <laughs> it does. I've I've tried um, waking up early to go to the gym. I can't. I'm not a morning person. I try to be a morning person, but I, I'd rather have sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'd rather, rather go to the gym after to kind of relieve that stress of the day and just forget about 
the day's stresses and you know mm-hmm. just kind of re- relief from it cool uh let's see i have another question knowing what you know now like what would you tell your 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 high school self like is there is there, is there anything like you would tell yourself to like um huh. better uh, get you on like the path you want to be like is there something like hey don't take that one class <clears throat> or, like don't take that one professor or um don't go to that one <laughs> party with that one person i don't know i'm just making it random <laughs> Um, I think I would tell myself to kind of be more outgoing because I, I was way too quiet and I, I, I'm still am quiet and I'm still a little bit awkward and I was really awkward in high school and, um, just don't be, just be more out there, um, take school more seriously because I feel like I didn't take school really seriously. Um, yeah, just take. Just take um, school seriously. Be a little bit more outgoing. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I would have told myself that. Cool. Um, yeah, I think that transitions well into the future. So, um, what what sort of goals do you have? Either long term, short term. Um, what do you have planned? My plans. Well, I'm trying to get my master's in social work to either become a medical social worker. I don't know if you know what that, um, what a medical social worker is. Okay, so a medical social worker is, um, it's a social worker who works in a hospital setting. Uh-huh. So it could be, you know, if uh, if a client is dying from, you know, some sort of illness, the role of a social worker is to kind of be there for them to kind of, to be a support system and kind of work with them into spending the last few days of their life um healthy and happy mm-hmm. um or a kid who is going through some sort of trauma just kind of be a support system i think it's pretty uh self-explanatory oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> um yeah. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I I was inspired by that because of my my sister. She would spend most of her days in the hospital, mm-hmm. and um, so that's kind of like my the reason why I got I want to do that. Um, another goal of mine is to either do one on one therapy, so be a mm-hmm. clinical clinical worker, yeah, and uh, just go from there. Just just work in those goals and maybe once i'm a little bit older become a professor and just kind of share my experiences oh, okay cool is, is is therapy like a part of social work or can it be like its own thing <clears throat> because i think from my point of view i see it as like two like different jobs but i'm getting a vibe that like uh... it can be part of social work but it doesn't <clears throat> have to be like the main thing yeah um with um with social work you don't have to do therapy but if you want to be a therapist you either have to major in like psychology or social work or counseling so either either of those majors um but you don't have to be a therapist as a social worker Uh so but if you do want to become a therapist with a social work degree you need to get your license in social work so Uh that's that's the way to get there to become a therapist um but yeah you definitely don't have to be a therapist if you want to be a if if you're majoring in social work okay but that's like my goal and you know i i want to do one-on-one therapy with others and just kind of help them Mm -hmm. with like any trauma they're going through or anything um help them with like mental health yeah and then um do you also handle I don't know what you call it, sort of like the, the back end of stuff, like the um, paperwork or documentation or any of that stuff so that the client doesn't have to uh, worry about those sorts of things. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So with like with where I'm working at now, that's that's what I have. We do assessments. Uh-huh. So when we kind of get to know the 
the child, we have like a system in our computer where we type down everything we know about them and we write down everything about what's going on in their life. Um, like their past experiences, we put all the information and their history and in, mm-hmm. in there. And I also personally have my own notebook with like each client's, you know, information. So definitely with the same thing with like the, when you become a therapist, you it's the same thing as well. It's just mm-hmm. a little bit more in-depth work, mm-hmm. but okay yeah yeah i didn't i didn't really think about like uh social work as like a stepping stone into therapy i thought like if you wanted to be a therapist Mm -hmm. you have to go through like the psychology route and then you have to get your master's and then you had to get i don't know your your psyd your doctorate (laughs) or doctorate um because i know that there's a difference between like doctorate and your psyd like psyd is more like Mm -hmm. hands-on like doctorate is more like research-based um yeah no you with a license in clinical social work you could do therapy my aunt who's um who's the social worker she's a therapist she was a therapist at one uh, point and she had her own private practice okay um i don't know if you've ever seen like uh you know offices with like therapists they'll have lcsw after their name Uh because a lot of therapists um are lcsws so oh, you could okay. definitely be a therapist with a, a social work degree. Okay. And and why do you have to go through that licensing like process? Because I know like uh, for like doctors <laughs> or for nurses, you have to be an RN to like work in the hospital and stuff like that. Um, um, like why is that? I mean, like I'm like I'm coming from a completely different field where you don't you don't need to be registered at yeah. all, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> um i i really don't know uh i'm Uh, not that far into the degree but with the license i know after you get your master's um Mm -hmm. you kind of apply for your license online and then you get to uh i believe it's two to three years of supervision Mm -hmm. um to get your license and i think when you get your license you go through um all that information on how to become a therapist i don't know exactly so i'm not that far into it (laughs) but you could after those after you're licensed with your with clinical social work you could become a therapist i don't know exactly the all the details all the reasoning behind but okay mm -hmm. but with your master's you do go into more depth into and do private do practice like with like internships Mm -hmm. on like therapy why so you get all that experience in your master's yeah dang yeah all right, cool. it's it's a lot <laughs> yeah that that sounds like a lot because um in the like software industry it's like it's very different <laughs> um yeah yeah because most of the time we can get away with like with the bachelor's but then even then you don't even need to get your bachelor's you just have to um do projects to prove that you can do the job basically okay um, yeah and like honestly like like 90 percent of the time like you'll be fine <laughs> um so just... at your job is there any i'm mm-hmm. oh, sorry uh, at your job are are there any like workers who don't have like their degree um i actually don't know because i don't know like who has their <laughs> bachelor's or who has their master's um Oh, okay. I know my manager. I know he. I well, most of us like we at least have our bachelors. Um, I think my manager did. Actually, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't want to assume what major he, <laughs> he did. Um, <laughs> but he went to Chico State. Um, and, okay. Uh, yeah, he's from Ohio. He went to Chico State. Um, he worked at um at HP for a little bit, but then. Um, he he got he got a job at Haas, which is our current company. Um, and then he eventually worked his way up up into management. Um, but as for oh, okay, uh, but for as for other people, um, I I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would assume most people um that are working in like some engineering position have at least their bachelor's. Um. Maybe, maybe they're masters. I don't know. It's just, I guess it just uh, depends on the person. Um, oh, okay. Um, I know for for my work, um, I learned 
a lot of the stuff I do at work, I actually learned it not in my major, but in like um, at like hackathons and um, at other events that don't pertain strictly to like school school. Okay. Um, but I did take a class that kind of jump started um, my like development in um, iOS because I, I make iOS apps, so that's my main job. <laughs> oh, okay, that's <laughs> cool. I wish yeah. I wasn't into that stuff. I, I I'm not good with technology. I'm not tech savvy. Yeah, it's it's, it's okay. That's that's <laughs> why that's why I got into technology is because um like I wasn't tech savvy at all like in high school because. Um, when I was like our freshman sophomore year, um, the computer would always frustrate me because like something would break like on on the weekend on a Saturday, <laughs> and then I would just spend that whole Saturday just trying to fix whatever um, whatever broke. And so that kind of motivated me to like try to understand what these problems were and what the issues were for computers. And eventually, mm-hmm. that got into like um smartphones and then i got into mobile development and uh here i am now so um (laughs) yeah that's that's kind of the rabbit hole that i went down um which i can get into more and more depth if i ever did an episode on myself (laughs) that would be kind of weird somebody should interview you (laughs) yeah i was i was thinking about that the other day like if if i if i'm ever on post tsunami like how do i interview myself (laughs) you know i mean you could ask you could ask somebody to like interview you yeah yeah that'd be cool Um, that'd be cool just to kind of get your perspective yeah yeah because um like i don't want to be talking to myself (laughs) that would be that would be kind of weird. So, Duke, what do you think about, like, oh, good, good thing you asked. Um, that'd be funny, though. But, but, yeah, that'd be cool just to kind of get your input and, in, like, how you've been doing, like, after, yeah. you know, high school. Yeah, because um, if you watch all the episodes, I've done, I think, seven of these now at this point. Like, you can get mm-hmm. kind of nuggets of what how I've been doing, like, here and there. Um, yeah. But, uh yeah, I, I was thinking about that a couple of days. Like, how do I interview myself? That's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, anyways, uh, getting back on topic. Um, um, I have a question here. So, like, uh, where, did, like, how does the idealistic self look like? Like, you're, like, the best version of yourself, whether that's, like, obtainable or not. Like what Ooh. what is the most like <laughs> idealistic version of yourself um that's a hard question i didn't really think about yeah <laughs> i don't really think about that i think just being happy you know that's mm-hmm. it doesn't matter well it does matter but i just you know just being happy um whether it be you know if I don't know. That's a hard question. Yeah, it's so, it's kind of a loaded question, um, but it's something that I, mean, it, I hope that sparks some conversation. Yeah, I mean, just being happy, being you know, a lot of people think like, oh, just be you know, be successful. Like I do think that, but just being happy, you know, mm-hmm. just knowing that I, you know, I put in the hard work, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just with me, I like I want to be successful, like. Uh, my career wise but honestly just happy because if I do be succeed in what I do but if I'm not happy then what was the point of it yeah yeah right so I mean and then now that I think of it maybe you know and like for example the best version of myself in 10 years would be you know in a different city or a different country and if i'm happy then i'm i'm happy just yeah. <laughs> think it's pretty straightforward mm-hmm. <laughs> no where no matter what i am or what i'm doing if i'm not happy then what's what's the point of it that's kind of my i think my my point of view yeah like where do you uh for you like where do you think your source of happiness is because you know like you can you can do a bunch of drugs and be happy, but like that's not very productive. You know what, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> I think as long as I'm, I'm doing something that helps others, then 
I'm happy. Like I'm happy with where I'm at now, you know, working with where I'm working, Mm -hmm. um, being home with my family. Now I've, you know, being away for like four years kind of took a toll on me, (laughs) but now that I'm home, I'm happier being closer to home. Um, so just as long as I'm doing something that's making me a better person, then I think that's the best version of myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then um, so, for for you, like, how would you define success? Because I realize that everyone has like a different defini- <laughs> definition of yeah. success. Um, <laughs> just depends on the person's goals. Like, yeah. my goal is to to become a social worker at a hospital then if i made it there then you know i made it Mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm happy being there and i'm doing what i've been wanting to do and then from there then i make another goal and once i reach that goal then i then i um make another goal Mm -hmm. and i think as time goes on we you know we're gonna create better versions of ourselves you know as we grow we're gonna continue becoming better people and that's the goal right to become Mm -hmm. better versions of ourselves even after we've succeeded Mm -hmm. that version then we continue on Mm -hmm. so it's never ending (laughs) yeah that's true so you want to take it like one step at a time yeah you know it's life's life's crazy so just continue making new goals Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you mentioned um, moving back to Oxnard. Like, how has it been moving back? Because um, when I when I moved back, um, I mean, it was nice to be away from my family. Um, yeah, you know how it is. Uh, you like it's nice to be away from them, but um, in a way, it was like really bad because I didn't keep up with my family and what was happening with my family. And I think if if I checked in more often. Um, I feel like I could have helped prevent like some bad things. I know I, I know I'm being kind of vague, like, but I'm doing it on purpose. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? um, um. So, like, how's your experience been, like, moving, um, moving back with with the fam? So when I was gone, I I think I was in the same position as you were. I didn't keep up with, I wasn't in touch with my family as much yeah. as I wanted it to be. I think I would hear from my mom like once a week or every two weeks. Um, I was so into like what I was, whatever I was doing there, you know, I was independent. I was doing my own thing, but I did miss having my family because, you know, I would come home from a long day and then I would come home to an empty house. You know, I had, I was living by myself. Um, but then once I came back here, it was, it was such a big different change because yeah. I was so used to living that life and then coming here. I moved in back home to my parents and, you know, I didn't have that space that I had over there, you know. Yeah, that's what I, that's the first thing. (laughs) I don't have space um, like I used to. Like, I can't just, I can't just leave the house. I mean, I can. Exactly. (laughs) But, you know, like, you know, you know, in the back of your mind, like someone's going to be wondering where you are, which, which I didn't really get that. You know, when I was living on my own and in, in slow. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's like one of the big differences that um I've noticed. Yeah. Um yeah, over there I would leave and then come home like at two in the morning. Nobody yeah, waiting for me exactly. except my dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then and then here, you know, I'm right now I'm currently living at my parents' house while I'm finding housing, which I finally did, but hey, uh <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but Throughout this time, you know, I would go out with the friends and, it, you know, my parents are wondering like, oh, where are you? When are you coming home? And it's just like, it's still, I'm still getting used to that, you know, because I'm like, yeah. oh, it's been, I, it's been so long where I just get to do whatever I want without somebody telling me where I'm at. And here it's constantly like, where, where are you? When are you coming home? It's late. Come back home. And it's, yep. <laughs> it, <laughs> and it's like, it's, it's, it's weird, you know, because we're like, 26 20 mm-hmm. you know 27 years old and yep. having our parents tell us where we're at it's kind of yeah kind of weird <laughs> yeah it is kind of weird having our parents still down our throats i mean maybe not that, maybe not to that extent but uh yeah it's just um like they're gonna be wondering about your well 
being and since you live with them yeah it's, it's it's hard for your parents not to still think of you as like their baby you know so, yeah yeah so it's definitely definitely hard to adjust to that mm-hmm. but i and i enjoy being home mm-hmm. i i missed having like family like my nieces and my nephews like my cousin's kids you know i miss yeah. having little kids around because they, well, i'm so yeah, yeah. close to all of them and mm-hmm. so i'm um, i'm glad of being back home <laughs> cool yeah it's um i want to talk about covid for a little bit because um with covid um this is honestly the most time i've spent with my parents like legit it's it's very strange because um when when I was growing up, my parents were always at work. You know, after school, I would go to my, I would yeah. walk to my grandparents' house. You know, I, I wouldn't see my, my, my parents until maybe eight, when, eight, eight, eight at night when they picked me up, you know, from my grandparents' house. And, um, and then by that time, you know, my parents, they still need to cook dinner and wind down from work. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, like yeah, I got to see my parents, but like very for a very small like window of time. And then I had homework and blah blah blah. Um, I feel like I never had to, I never got to build a relationship with them. But now when COVID hit, it's it's so strange because I just <laughs> my parents are like always around. Well, maybe not now because we opened back up. But like the last couple months when everything was um, pretty much locked down. It was the most time mm-hmm. I've had with my parents, and I think it was just super strange to, like, spend time with them. Um, I don't know if you had that oh, experience. Really? Yeah, like, I just, my my parents, like, they were always working, right? Like, supporting the family and all that. Oh, wow, okay. So, I rarely got to spend, like, time, like, time, time with them. So like even during um, COVID, where I got to watch something like mundane as like Family Feud with my mom, that was actually like a really big deal like to me because I never really spent that much time with my parents. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't know if you had any of those sort of experiences with like COVID. That COVID it like opened Can- any doors that you know were previously opened. No, I, for me, it's kind of the same because my dad um, doesn't work some weekdays. Uh-huh. So um, I would see him a lot. And then weekends, um, the same thing. They don't work weekends. Oh, so okay. I would, you know, I would spend time with them. Um, but when I was in SAC, for sure, I lost connection with them a lot. But now that I moved back, it, that connection, yeah. like we, we rekindled our relationship. But for the most part, it hasn't changed. I, oh, I, think, I think I'm more... I'm <laughs> I think for me it's more like I want to get away from them it's like oh, completely get, get opposite you. from yeah <laughs> like now I just kind of want to get out of the house to just kind of have that space between us because I'm always home and I'm always with them mm-hmm. so for me it's completely the opposite I just want to get away from them yeah yeah I'm kind of <laughs> in the same situation too but it's it's nice it's <laughs> nice spending like time with my parents because I, I never really got to do that or not as much as I wanted to, you know, because yeah, my parents were always at for work. For sure. And um, that's yeah. kind of had, like, downstream effects with, you know, my, me growing up and my siblings growing up since, you know, my parents weren't around that much. Like, we were sort of, like, left to our own devices and we had to, you know, traverse life kind of by ourselves, like, socially, I guess, from, like, a social aspect. Yeah, for sure. That's how I was yeah. growing up too. My um, I had a babysitter. My mom would leave. Both my parents would work from like seven o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. till six p.m. So like twelve hour shifts. My mom still does those twelve hour shifts now. Oh, dang. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I never really got to see them. Um, and then like in high school when we were in like in band, we would stop like at five p.m. Yeah. So I would come home and my mom would still be working. And by the time she got home and winding down, it was already late. Yep. And I would be in bed already. So it's like, I don't really have that relationship with my parents growing up. So I definitely see where you're, you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah, no, my parents worked like Monday through Saturday. So it was like really on oh, wow. Sunday. Yeah. 
it was Monday, Monday through Saturday, you know, because they had their own nail salon and mm -hmm. had to manage the business and all that stuff. And like Sunday was really the only time, um, like the whole family was there. But like since we didn't really have like that relationship, you know, like over time you feel more distant. I don't know. Like I, th I think it's easier to build a relationship like when you're younger like yeah as a as a as a as like a little kid or a little toddler but you know as your kids get older it gets harder to like organically build that relationship without like trying to force it um, yeah definitely yeah so i don't know it's just one of those things that compounds you know over time and you know that's and then we're at the situation now where um uh like it it's hard to get that relationship like a good relationship with the parents and I, I think a lot of a lot of like people our age can attest to that I don't know <laughs> yeah I, I definitely see I definitely see that for sure um it now that I that you mentioned it I've noticed I've, I don't know if you've noticed any like different traits that your parents have that you didn't notice before oh let me think about that for a second because I feel like um socially I'm more like a my mom like I'm very fairly reserved, um, kind of quiet, um, but we're loud when like when we want to be, and then I guess it depends on like the subject <laughs> and yeah, you know, it, like depends on the people you're talking to, um, that yeah. sort of thing. Um, in terms of like maybe my worth ethic, I'm more like my dad, I would say. Okay. Or like being <clears throat> like driven, probably more like my dad. Um, cause my dad, I think my dad has like a pretty good worth ethic when he puts his mind toward, towards it. Um, yeah. Let's see what else about my parents that I noticed. Um, <laughs> one thing I noticed about my mom is that like, she's very, um, I don't want to say simple. Cause that sounds like kind of, <laughs> that sounds like a negative <laughs> connotation, but she's very like, she's very happy with what she has. She like, she doesn't need, you know, like the latest iPhone or she doesn't need to be like, mm -hmm. she's, like she's not, she like, she's not um like, she doesn't have to be like caught up with the Joneses, so to speak, where she has to have like the latest thing okay. or like, like the latest car. Or, she's not materialistic. Yeah. She's not materialistic like at all. And okay. um, I was talking to my parents a couple of days ago and my dad was like, was asking my mom like how come you aren't like material materialistic like kind of to a fault because he kind of sees that like as a fault um but my mom's just very okay. happy with like with what she has she's like very humble i guess in in that respect that's good um, then. <laughs> yeah it's good I, yeah I, I see it as a good thing so um yeah that's one thing that i didn't really think about but uh, i definitely noticed it now like during covid um she's like not very material yeah I... at all which which is a good thing, but in terms of like expressing love and the love languages and all that, um, uh, she doesn't really like buy gifts like for anyone, like material things. So in terms of like, okay, like giving of material things, she's like it's not really her style either. <laughs> Which I don't know that that could offend okay. some people. I don't know. <laughs> um, definitely i know somebody whose like love language is gifts and i'm not like that so i remember g not giving that person a gift and they were kind of offended and i'm like oh i yeah. didn't know <laughs> so i yeah, it's, yeah. it's 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 a i it's weird that's a yeah that's an interesting love language to me yeah yeah i'm not i'm not big <laughs> on gifts either i mean i like i like i love giving gifts like I love like finding like the perfect gift and, and being like, dude, they're gonna love. Yeah, this. I agree with that. Like that's that's so much fun for me. But uh, yeah, I, I do like doing that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, receiving gifts is like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> like I don't, like I don't. Yeah. yeah, I'm not like too much of a like receiving gifts person, but I love giving gifts. That's always fun. Um. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. What else did I want to touch? Um, so I think that's it for the future. Um, is there any, like anything else you want to talk about or anything you want to hit, um, with the future? Oh, do you have any like band advice? Maybe not like 
band specifically, but maybe just, I guess, for life? <laughs> uh, to be more out there, you know, try to expand your, um, how do you say, your resources, uh, expand, what's that word I'm looking for? Um, join a lot of clubs, you know, to make a, a lot of friends, you know, make your high school experience fun. You know, you only get one. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, be more outgoing. You know, try to try to make as many friends as possible. I think that's my my uh, input on it. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with the um, joining, like maybe organizations and meet new people. Because I feel like I should have done more of that in college. Because I, I I feel like after. <laughs> high school because because i was so burnt out from drum major stuff and oh, family okay. leadership stuff that by the time i went to college i just wanted to crawl back in my hole <laughs> because i <laughs> i i used up so much energy to um um like be part of the band and be like a good leader yeah. role model for the band that yeah. uh, i needed to, to like recharge like back in college so yeah. definitely when i was in college i like i just kind of went back to my reserved quiet self Um, yeah definitely in college too i agree that join as many organizations clubs as you can i worked for the most part in my college experience i was in one organization i only joined for like a year Uh out of the three in at sac state so i should have you know experienced more of that uh college life that i didn't get to experience (laughs) I did, but you know, I wish I would have joined more clubs and make made more friends than I did. Yeah. Hey, but so hey, definitely. You were. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a good use of your yeah. time. Some of like, 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 like some yeah. of my college was like, I wasn't even working. I was just like, just like lounging around, like doing nothing, like on the weekends, you know, stuff like that. It's like, oh, I wish I like, <laughs> yeah. I, like I could have at least worked to like make money, <laughs> um, to help pay. Yeah, some of those. like I, I worked because. Yeah, that's what I needed because I was like, I, I have my own place. I need a, you know, I need, I, I need to pay it. Yeah. <laughs> but I wish I would have had a little bit more time for clubs and organizations yeah. and made more friends. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, all right. I think that's all I got. Do you want to give uh, any shout outs or where people can find you? Um, shout outs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to give a shout out to every one in our class, uh, Cassie, Sandro, um, you, uh, who else? Sophia. Who Sophia. Yeah. There was just, John. John Sabe was in there too. Yeah, John. Um, just hope you guys are doing well and the rest of everybody else that I encountered in high school. Hope you guys are doing well and keep working hard <laughs> yeah i'm like two for six i think there were six of us right i, I think so of us. six or seven of us i'm two for seven so um that'd be cool if we can get like everyone in an episode at one point that'll be pretty cool i don't know i have like that'd special, be cool. i have like special ideas um like that actually be pretty cool because I don't remember a lot of like high school memories. I don't oh. remember most of them. I don't know why I don't remember a lot oh. of the memories I had. The only very specific ones, but mm-hmm. it'd be nice to kind of get everybody together and just kind of see if they remember something that I, you know, I don't remember. Yeah, that might. You know, something. just kind of. Yeah, just yeah. kind of go back and get mm-hmm. that all together. Yeah. All right, Alejandra. It was good talking to you. <laughs> Yeah, it was good to go talking to you too. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, thanks for coming on and uh I'll talk to you later. All right, talk to you later. Thank you.